thank you all for the opportunity to be a, at least a virtual part of the Renewable Energy India eExpo. I'm very pleased to have this connection. I've worked in uh, India since the early 1990s when uh, P.V. Rao was Prime Minister and uh, he uh, liberalized the uh, import tariff uh, structure in India allowed for businesses in India to grow and increasingly uh, self-reliant. Uh, much of the work that I did in India uh, during the 90s uh, helped some uh, manufacturers, mainly in the Hyderabad and Secunderabad area of Andhra Pradesh. Um, and it's been a delight to see today that the markets, especially markets in the US, India, and China, all have grown to be large enough to support local manufacturing because the market is large enough to enable that manufacturing. Uh, part of the uh, work that I do these days is actually to help um, several companies that are starting up their own manufacturing capabilities to be vertically integrated, to be completely self-reliant all the way from making their own silicon through deploying their own power plants. The cost of solar has uh, fallen incredibly. Uh, today we see that uh, parts of the world are able to install uh, solar power plants that have electricity generated for less than one and a half cents a kilowatt hour, a tremendous uh, drop in the cost to produce our own power from something that we make ourselves. I've had a, a pleasure as well of uh, working in India as part of the Green Star Foundation. Part of, uh, ironically, the connection to Green Star was to bring solar power and internet connections to rural villages to enable a micro enterprise. And our first project in India was dedicated on Gandhiji's birthday on October 2nd, 20 years ago in the year 2000. And that project has itself uh, seeded similar projects not just in the areas uh, of uh, Andhra Pradesh, but also in other parts of the planet where we can learn from each other because the speed of communications uh, makes it possible for information to be connected to our power sources. Digitalization of the grid is uh, what's happening uh, largely here in the US and is a, a significant part of the uh, historical great collaboration between the US and India uh, in which the cost of electricity is coming down and the data about where the power is being generated, where it's being stored and where it's being used can be integrated together. We can make far better use of the wires we already have and we can minimize how much more we need to spend on copper wire to connect people when we have the chance to bring the data and the low cost generation to the local needs. Uh, I'm hopeful of um, being able to become a greater part of the network of resources available to people who are looking for new business models looking for uh, ways to engage, not just in helping advance the quality of life within India, but in the rest of the world at the same time. Uh, India has some great opportunities during the clean tech decade, both to uh, see photovoltaics displace coal for power generation on large scale, and to uh, be able to use photovoltaics on the smaller scale, on the microgrid scale. One of the uh, main areas of attention for resiliency uh, in our grid system here in the US is the introduction of microgrids. India has been a leader in this field, uh, mainly because there are so many villages historically that uh, were not able to access the grid system and became self-reliant within their own communities. 
that same concept of microgrids and uh, small community seg sectors uh, connected into the grid makes the grid more resilient and as a um, byproduct of our awareness changing about the vulnerability to pandemics, thinking about how all of the things that we do in our society and in our infrastructure systems becoming more resilient is the hallmark of uh, and a touchstone for how we identify tasks and projects that we want to implement um, as soon as possible. And it's possible now because the cost of capital is as low as it is. Being able to take advantage of the ultimate capital good, which is a solar panel, where if you can obtain that solar panel now, you can get free electricity for decades. I've been delighted to see that um, solar panels that were put into the field in uh, the early 80s in 1982 in uh, parts of Europe that have been connected to the grid and continuously monitored since then with a well-designed package uh, after uh, more than 35 years of use in the field, the output of those solar panels is more than 95% of what it was when they were first installed. It's an incredible testament to the ability to engineer and make quality materials that last. I think that we'll see 50 year lifetimes for solar panels in the not too distant future and we'll be able to prove it. In the month of April during the Earth Day week, we uh, had an e-convention that brought together over 150 leaders from around the world from over 36 countries that uh, have produced a declaration of recommitting ourselves to addressing climate change and addressing it in this decade, making a difference now and doing what we can to learn from each other to help us speed up that attention that's necessary for making the planet a better place for our children, our grandchildren and our great grandchildren. Uh, I'm uh, looking forward to the opportunity of being able to travel again and hope to be able to join you in person in India in the not too distant future. Thank you.